Hi, everyone. This is Karita Parts bringing you a very special interview with NFL draft prospect and Michigan State University wide receiver, Daryl Stewart Jr. Daryl is a four-year letter winner and three-year starter, finishing his career with 150 receptions for 1,640 yards and seven touchdowns in 43 games, including 21 starts. Welcome, Daryl. Thank you for being with me today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Of course. So, you know, I know it's been rough for a lot of people right now with the pandemic and we're all inside. So I want to first ask you how you're doing and how you've been holding up. I've been doing good. Uh, had a chance to be with family and uh, just sit down and uh, reflect on a lot of things. Still be able to stay in shape, uh, doing some in-home training, uh, practicing the whole social distancing thing, but still finding a way to stay hungry and just still training, go out to my dreams. That's good as you're practicing social distancing because there's a lot of people who actually are not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. you, you talked about staying hungry. How are you able to do that at a time like this and in the situation that we're in? Uh, just, I mean, I knew the end goal. I knew where I wanted to be at and seeing my brothers and sisters every day. I saw my mom just look at them. They're my motivation and they always been and just coming out even when I work out in the garage or I work out in the backyard, I just take that one glance over to see my mom or some cooking in the kitchen or something like that. Just get myself motivation to keep staying hungry. Yeah, that's important to have that motivation. So I want to talk a little bit more about that. What is it about your family and your mom specifically that gives you that motivation? Where did that come from for you? Uh, just knowing like my mom's always, uh, she's my superhero. And like seeing her just, uh, as a woman, you know, take care of her responsibility and never look for a handout. And always wake up never complaining about what she has to do. She goes to work and she's take care of five kids and she's just always like putting her best foot forward. And that's always showing me like there's never, you know, a time that I should complain about anything. Just always make uh, good things out of the things you feel like can be worse. But she just always look for her for confidence and look for her for. Even with knowledge, like I said, she's my superhero. My superhero don't wear a cape. She get up <laughs> early morning and go to work every day. So that's most of it. That's great. And I'm sure she's really proud of you and everything that you've accomplished. This is a big week. We can't overlook that. The NFL draft is coming up Thursday through Saturday. As a prospect, what goes through your mind leading up to these next couple of days? Uh, just figuring out what team you're going to fall to and seeing what, you know, what the future might hold for you. Honestly, I'm just ready to put on the football pass again to have fun, doing something I really love to do. I feel like that's the one thing the pandemic really did. It helps you reflect on, you know, the things that you really enjoy. And if you really want it as bad, uh, how bad you're willing to work for it. And I, I know one thing is when you uh missing something or something that's been taken from you, you see how very valuable it is to your life. And I know how football is it's very valuable. It's, it's been a vessel for a lot of things I have done in my life, so I really miss it a lot. Yeah, I mean, that's very true because I think there is a lesson in this pandemic besides the actual virus itself, and that lesson is everybody's having a chance to sit down and reflect, and a lot of people are spending more time with their uh, with their family. So I think there definitely is a lesson in all of this. And with the pandemic and all the changes that have occurred with the draft now it's virtual um and also there's activities that couldn't take place such as pro days how has your draft preparation changed during this pandemic oh it's changed a bit uh just knowing that you can't go and work out for teams um not being going to the combine but not being able to go to pro day yeah that was kind of different but uh just you mean talking to teams virtually and you know getting to know coaches uh, virtually, it's, it's. I mean, for us, I want to say our generation to uh, <laughs> underdate myself, but I mean, it's kind of useful to us. But I mean, for the coaches and things like that, it's kind of tough for them to actually get to know somebody and you're not personally with them physically. But I mean, uh, the draft process right now for me doing doing this whole thing is. I mean, it's going to be shaky. It's going to be a little confusing. Definitely, when you're not going to different workouts, but putting my best foot forward and you know, thinking of the best and working for the best. And yeah. Honestly, it's, it's honestly been a blessing. You know, it's been a childhood dream to be able to go through this process. 
because I know a lot of people was, I mean, not, you know, able to, you know, be here and experience these things. So I'm really just living my dreams through them as well. That's that's very true. And you talked about that combine. What was that experience like for you? And what are you hoping that you were able to show teams? Uh, it was a surreal feeling growing up as a kid, watching you six, seven years old, eight years old, watching it on TV, everybody huddled around the TV. And, you, and then you get to a point where it's like, you there, you in the thing that you used to dream about, play on the video games about, and you actually there. It was a, a surreal feeling. And when I got there, it just, it was actually an amazing experience being able to be around a whole bunch of other guys who's great athletes and great coaches that you can experience, you know, the whole NFL experience with and getting to know new guys, creating new friends and yeah. just going to see new friends. It's, it's, it's been a blessing. And what I show teams is, I mean, a guy that's relentless, uh, ready to work, you know, is a, a great catcher make plays as a playmaker and I'm just dominant and just hungry. And you talked about speaking to some teams already. Are you able to share which teams you've had a chance to talk to? Uh, definitely. I have talked to the the Ravens. I talked to the New York Jets. I talked to the Bills. I uh, talked to the Cleveland Browns. And I talked to the Texans. So. Okay, that's quite a few teams. The Texans, that's a hometown team for you. Exactly, you're exactly. Dallas. That's all my mom reminds <laughs> And they me need of. a wide receiver, you know, <laughs> after getting rid of DeAndre. Exactly, exactly. That's that's cool, very cool. Now, in talking with those teams, and you, you said what you were hoping that uh, the teams took away from you at the Combine, but what is it about your game that you feel is special, and why should a team use their draft pick on you? Uh, I know about me. Uh, I'm a big playmaker. I love to make big plays and a relentless blocker. I love doing the small things too because the small things eventually end up to being big factors in the game. Uh, go after it. I'm going to be production. I'm always bringing production to whatever team I go to. Uh, affectionate personality, man. I'm going to be in the locker room and just bringing a great vibe to the team and just doing things the right way and helping us win the games. And, eventually win the Super Bowl. Yes, that's the dream for a lot of football players, get that Super Bowl. Now, you talked about your infectious personality, and I saw that you won, like, the team humor, the humorous award for uh, yeah. three years in a row. So are you funny? <laughs> I mean, I can. I guess you got I, do. I, got, I got some good jokes in now, but I honestly feel like it's just me naturally. I just try to always, you know, bring that good vibe around people and, and bring out the good in people that do the, the, the main thing that my dad used to always tell me is like to inspire somebody and to make them you know feel good about themselves that's one of the greatest feelings you can do i mean giving somebody a gift is good too as well but always making somebody feel good and making sure making sure they let you let them know that they appreciate it and they have value that's one of the biggest thing i feel like why i want to award it a lot yeah now you you mentioned your father and you like you said, you have this infectious personality, but you've been through your own set of adversity. Um, mm -hmm. I know you lost your father at a young age. How old were you? I was 12 years old. 12 years old. So at 12 years old, what does that do emotionally and mentally? And then how were you able to use sports or anything else to overcome that hump? Definitely. So my dad, he was definitely, he, he was one of my biggest motivators. He was my coach. He was my dad. He was my best friend. So it was just that whole situation with losing him. It, it, it was very tough. And yeah. it began to be aware to me, me losing him at a young age. And at that age, 12, 1 to 13, you're trying to find your stuff as a young man and things like that. But one thing I always knew that he wanted me to play football. and He wanted me to always you know, succeed at the things that he felt like he didn't do. And, and I feel like that pushed me mostly because he was – a great guy and everybody loved him in Houston and he was well known and it was in pretty tough shoes to fill. But I mean, I feel like he left down a, a wonderful foundation for me to pick up on it. That's be my biggest motivation just to know that he's always watching. So that's my biggest push for myself. Yeah. And what lessons did your dad um, teach you sports or otherwise that you still carry with you to this day? Uh, one of the biggest things he always told me is a man's word is his bond. I mean, anything that you say, 
you have to stand behind it and stand up on it and be willing to stand and, and let people know that, you know, this is what I believe in. My dad, he was in Iraq for a little bit as well, so mm-hmm. he's a very biblical man. He used to always tell me stories about the book in the Bible about Job and things like that and how, I mean, times might get tough, adversity is going to hit, but it's actually testing your faith. And it's how you respond to adversity that really shows how your character and your courage. And I used to always sit with me as like, Responding to adversity, you see a lot of people, they break. Yeah. But it's a big thing. He used to always tell me, pressure either make diamonds or it's going to break you. So it all that's depends right. on you. Yeah, and adversity, like you said, like that's a test of character. And Job, that's a really good book that he pointed you to because of all the people in the Bible, Job is the one who went through the most adversity and he exactly. didn't break. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, building upon that, um, when you were at Michigan State, I know that you were in a situation where you broke your leg, uh, missed four games of your senior year. Take us through that and what your initial thought process was when that happened. So, my initial thought process was, I mean, coming out, you know, having a successful season and then that happening, you like, I mean, it did bother me because it's like my senior year. Yeah. Uh, you you planned on, like, I'm going to go out this way, but, I mean, it didn't happen. But the main thing was just talking to my mom every day, and she telling me, like, not letting that fold me. Like, she was big on, like, well, this should, God did this probably so you can focus more on school. And I was like, I didn't think <laughs> of that way, but I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, mom, I'm not really trying to hear that. But then <laughs> she really just sat down and broke it down with me, and it actually – Help me understand it's like it happened that reason and then it, me having to put my energy in other things like now that I'm not physically out there playing I can help my teammates more help the younger guys learn more and you know go around and just teach guys the right way to do things even though I'm not on the field and at first it really bothered me because you want to be out there and the, the big games that you're missing you want to definitely want to play in those games but it actually helped me sit down and talk to myself and realize that there's certain things in life that's more important and it helped me fill out those things in life as well. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you have a really good perspective and a good foundation with your parents and your mom. They sound like they give you some really sound advice. Were you at all concerned when that first happened that it would have an impact on your road to the draft? Uh, I didn't really think about it at first. The most thing I was just thinking about is the team, like college, college. I was like, man, I, I just got to get back. I got to get back. But as the, the season started to go more on and on, you get to the end of the season, I thought about it. And I was like, I mean, it, it, it might have an impact. But uh, my mom always told me, you really can You can only control what you can control. So mm-hmm. I can't really do nothing while I'm injured. The only thing I can do is just interview well, yeah. you know, finish up school good and basically just get ready for the combine and things like that. And like I said, you can only control what you can control. So the main thing I wanted to do is put myself in a situation where whenever the time is calling for me to get back there and play, which was in the NFL PA Bowl game and the combine, you just perform at your best and you do things at your best. And that's how I feel like I kind of put the best foot forward when no times come. Now, speaking of putting the best foot forward, you were actually back in two months from a broken leg. Now, I don't know how long it takes to heal from a broken leg, but that seems like a pretty quick turnaround time. What was rehabbing? How did you rehab, I should say, back to full strength to participate in your final bowl game? Um, Just my trainers was probably mad at me. I was in there 25-8. <laughs> just in there constantly trying to get things right. And I know uh, just early mornings, yeah. running treatment in the water, treatment in the water, ice stem, uh, countless, countless, countless. So I was just therapy, just working it out, exercising. And it was, I'm not going to uh, see any story. It was times when it was tough when you thought like it wasn't going to happen or you rushing it too fast. But I mean, you know, praying about it every night, taking your vitamins, you know, getting a good sleep schedule, and just eating the right way and just pushing yourself to the extent that you think you cannot go. It really helped me out. And I also want to thank my, my trainers and doctors who also helped me out as well. It just, you know, pushed me even the days I felt like 
you know, it wasn't working or it wasn't doing anything that it was actually working. So that whole process was just, it was, it was, it was crazy, but it was worth it. It was definitely worth it. It humbled me. Yeah. It humbled me. It definitely humbled me. I mean, that's true. It's not an easy process. And I think it's important for people to know that like when you get hurt, it takes good trainers. Like you, it sounds like you had, but also the mental strength to push yourself when it does get tough. So you said it was worth it. What did that teach you about yourself? Uh, it taught me that, and and I'm a big guy. Um, I'm really, when I want something, I want it right now. I feel like that's our whole generation. But that's why they yeah, call us the microwave true. generation. But <laughs> that is true. When I want something, I want it right now. But we, it's showing me, like, you got to have patience. Mm-hmm. And it's a way to go about things. And when you really want something, you have to sacrifice some things that you really want. If it's social life, is it, you know, playing video games or is it, just doing certain things that you like doing, you like you got to sacrifice. And that's one thing with me. I wanted to get back at an appropriate time, but at the same time, you have to sacrifice a lot of things. I know a lot of guys when they get hurt, they like to you know sit down and mope about it and you know lack in other life activities. But I told myself I'm not gonna let that. I'm not gonna let school fall back on the back burner. I'm not gonna let you know me getting up. You know, going to different workouts, fall back on the back burner. I mean, I wanted it, and it taught me also that, you know, if you really love something and you really say you want to do something, you're going to give it to all. Yeah. It doesn't matter, you know, what obstacle come in front of you. And it made me actually push myself to a limit where I was like, you know, I can overcome things that I mentally think I can't do. That's so true. So how do you think all of these obstacles – and lessons that you've learned so far in life will help you in the NFL? Uh, you're not gonna, uh, you're not gonna, everything is not gonna go, you know, as planned. I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody wants to get drafted. I mean, that's the whole point of you, you know, working up to this point. But I mean, if you don't, if you don't get drafted, I mean, that doesn't, that shouldn't be your final step. That shouldn't be your final, you know, swing at the whole battle. You should always, you know, keep going. And, it also taught me that you got to be coachable and you got to understand that change is always going to happen. That's one thing about life. Change is always going to happen and you can't settle for it. Want to be complacent and stay in the same place. You got to be, be able to keep moving around and keep doing things and keep fighting. And that's one thing about uh, my dad. He taught me how to be resilient, put yourself out there and work through it all. And no matter what going on, you keep smiling, you keep your head down and working. Yeah, I think with that, definitely with that mindset, you should do great in the NFL because it's important to to know that up front. Um, now, we talked about you on the field, a little bit off the field, but in addition to some of your off-field activities, I know that at MSU you were a part of the Leadership Council and um, Community Outreach. You put together some of your teammates and went back to Houston, where you're from, for Hurricane Harvey. Um, relief efforts. Can you just give us some perspective on how important community outreach is to you, and if you want to continue to carry that forward? Uh, it's it's a big thing to me, just knowing that growing up in a community where I me, mean, you know, it's not the biggest community of being financially stable and having certain things, uh, having government assistance for certain things, and people not knowing that that's a different way of life. It really made me more hungry growing up and leaving for school and seeing that it's a different way that you can live life and things like that. And it, it very motivated me. I mean, growing up, you know, not knowing about life insurance, not knowing about wow. different things like that, credit cards and good having good credit can give you a great name, you know, doing certain things and setting yourself up having a job that presents 401k, you know, matching percentages of stuff like that. And I really didn't know a lot of things like that coming out of my community. And when I got to college, things like that, it really, you know, woke me up to a point. It's like, man, if, if I can get my community or some people that I know about this, I mean, you can create an empire or you can flourish to different things. And yeah. that's one thing that motivated me. So, you know, when Hurricane Harvey, uh, situation presented itself I hands down I wanted to do it I wanted to do it I was you know honestly happy to do it and so thankful and grateful for my coach uh, Mark D'Antonio and also my teammates and the uh, 
team chaplain, uh, Phil Gillespie, who who allowed us to, you know, put the trip together. It was an amazing thing. And going there and, you know, seeing different things, but also seeing the neighborhood that you grew up in on the water, but also that you can take back and give back to them and uplift the people during this, you know, harsh time. It was an amazing feeling. That's that's really important. And what you said about going to Michigan, Michigan and being in a completely different environment and seeing <clears throat> what that had to offer compared to where you grew up and being able to bring that knowledge back, that's such an important point because a lot of times, you know, even where I grew up, I, I knew what it was like in different parts of town because I was exposed to it. But I know sometimes uh, people in other communities, they didn't get out of their community, so they had no idea what they were missing. So I really like what you said about that. Definitely. Yeah. All right, well, I don't want to keep you for too long. So uh, before we go, I do want to get to know you a little more off the field and who you are as a person. So I'm just going to ask you a couple fun questions. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so just give me your top two answers for each question. And okay. I'm going to ask you first, who's your favorite NFL player? Favorite NFL players, I should say. Favorite NFL player. Uh, I'm going to give you offense to defense. Okay. So okay. offense, I would say Jarvis Landry. And I say Jarvis Landry because I just love – he's a baller. He's a dog. Like, no matter, you know, what – he's asked to do, he's, like, doing it at 110 percent. Like, he's not the biggest guy, but, like, he makes the most craziest catches. Yeah. He breaks for the biggest plays. And, like, he'll go down there and, like, block a D lineman and make it look, you know, super easy. I think he's and a little underrated, too. I mean, he is. He is. I <laughs> promise he is. He's, yeah. like, super – man, the guy is so talented. Because, I mean, he went to LSU, and I grew up, you know, in Texas, and my uh, – head coach in high school, he went, he played at LSU. So I used to always look at insiders of him like, man, like Jarvis Landry is it's like, like he's the guy. And then for my defensive player, it would be uh, Jamal Adams. Yeah. I just, I just love the spirit he brings to the game and like how he just take everything and, and, pro and process it. And he's just a dog and he have fun playing the game. So that's a big thing for me. He does. All right, those are two two good players, and I like that they're not the traditional answers, too. So I like that. Now, going back to you being humorous, do you have favorite comedians? Favorite comedians. Like, so me and my – I'm probably like an old soul. Because I'm like <laughs> – I'm big on, like, 80s comedy, 90s comedy action. So, like, I'm a real big fan of, like – I like Martin. He's he's pretty funny. Like, Oh, yeah. I like Martin. He's, he's pretty funny, yeah. The other guy I really like is uh, Richard Pryor. He is yeah. like, Richard Pryor is pretty funny as well. That is definitely an old soul. And Martin, I mean, Martin comes on still. I catch it sometimes on BET, and I'm still laughing like I didn't see those episodes. <laughs> definitely. Like it's your first time. Right. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so favorite musical artist? Frazier Music. Musical artist. I'm not. I'm gonna go old and so okay. I'm, I'm gonna go old first. My favorite musical artist uh, is o Otis Redding. Oh, he has an uh, amazing voice. Uh, and the things. I mean, I don't really relate to the things that he he sings about because they be kind of <laughs> sad sometimes and they dealing with the blues. But it's just the melody of his voices. It's very. It's very. It's a very nice melody and it's very unique. Okay. And he's he's a very you know great guy and. Uh, new would be uh, Daniel Caesar. He's he's uh, one of my you know favorite artists, and I really like you know the work that he's put out, and he has a very nice, unique voice as well. So you're into R and B? Definitely, definitely. I like I like. I mean, I do listen to like you know game pump up music, like all the rap music, but you know sometimes I do like the little. R&B. It's the cleanup music on Sunday. So. <laughs> okay, I can see. I can see that. I can see that. All right, favorite movies. Favorite movies. So I'm going all old because I like number old movies. So. <laughs> well, this is good. See, this is what I mean. We wouldn't know this if these questions weren't asked. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So the first movie that I probably definitely uh, recommend and I like is Beverly Hill Cops. 
I like I love Beverly, Beverly Hill Cops. And the other one would be Lethal Weapon. Like the whole series. Just love it. The movies are so funny. Just all the guys that play in it. And just being able to see in those times just like the comedy and the action. It's, it's an amazing thing. I like this. I didn't have any expectations of your answers, but none of your answers are at all what I expected. So exactly. <laughs> That's great. All right. So to close this out, I just want to ask you, if you're drafted, who's the first person that you're going to talk to and what do you think you'll say? Uh, probably my mom. Just tell her thank you, you know, and I love you. And, and that, like, you know, how hard work for me is not going to go and notice that I'm going to definitely make sure I'm going to always put the uh, best foot forward and just give her a hug and let her know, like, this is only the beginning. That's great. And last but not least, is there anything else you want people to know about you before we sign off? Um, just, I mean, I'm a guy that I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy about life, you know, living yeah. and always looking for the next day to, you know, bring some joy to either somebody else's life or mine. So. All right. Well, thanks, Daryl. I really appreciate it. This has been a great conversation. It was good know getting to know you a little bit more on and off the field. And I wish you the best of luck with the draft. Thank you so much. You have a good one.